Do you ever wonder why you need a solid eight hours of sleep every night, but your buddy can get by with five? I do. Well, our next guest says that it could come down to your genes, and she's here to tell us why. Please welcome back to the show neuroscientist and TED speaker, Sarah Baldeo. Good to have you. I think most people have heard this idea that we need at least eight hours of sleep to function. I feel like I need nine. But anyway, <laughs> um, some people swear that they're totally fine on like four or five. So do different people need different amounts of sleep? So this whole idea around eight hours came out of the Industrial Revolution when we started working an eight-hour day. And so the theory was, well, work eight hours, sleep eight oh. hours. Right? And so the truth is that there are people that just need four to five hours. We are impacted by daylight savings time, mm -hmm. our circadian rhythm changes, the seasons change, mm -hmm. our eating habits change. So those things all impact our sleep. But there is a genetic component. And so in 2009, quite a long time ago, there was a study at the University of California. And what they did is they looked at a mother and a daughter mm -hmm. and they discovered this gene called the DEC2 gene. And this gene has a mutation. And for this mother and daughter, it showed that sleep is hereditary. What? Sometimes you just need four to five hours of sleep and you'll wake up feeling refreshed if you're one of these people. So what does this DEC2 gene, what does it do? So it's a gene mutation, and what it does is it impacts something called orexin. Mm -hmm. Orexin is a neurochemical that promotes wakefulness mm -hmm. and sleep. And so what we see is for most of us, it fluctuates throughout the day. When it decreases, you need to sleep, and when it increases, you feel like you're alert. But for people who have this DEC2 gene mutation, mm -hmm. it's pretty stable throughout the day. They're not gonna crash, it just stays consistent. Whoa. Okay, wait a second, wait a second. Because I need eight to nine, just like you, <laughs> Cynthia. So are these DEC2 people, are they superhuman? Yeah. It feels like it, right? right? Uh, it feels like they're superhuman. I will freely admit, I am one of Ooh. these people. Oh. Fancy. We can still be friends, okay, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we see in this DEC2 gene and this superhuman idea mm -hmm. is that these people just have this genetic mutation. And unfortunately, we mm. hear the word mutation, it has this negative connotation, right? Yeah. But they also have an increase in something called glutamate. Okay. And so when you meet people like this, mm. it is increased kind of learning, focus. They have better mood regulation. Yeah. They have better memory. I know. Wow. There's a lot of reasons to be jealous of these superhuman people. So how do you know if you have this yeah. is the big yeah. question. Yeah. If you are one of these people that wakes up feeling alert after a short sleep cycle, okay. if you can jump from activity to activity to activity and you don't feel exhausted, and you can also just take, um, which <laughs> just may, not, like, be the, not, me. may <laughs> not be the case, you can take a genetic test as well. Okay. So there's something called the SNP analyzer and it looks at the DEC2 gene and something called ADRB1 to tell you if you have this natural short sleeper kind of caveat in your life. Okay. So how many people yeah. in the general population have, like approximately have this sleep gene? It is, it is in a very short span of the population. Mm -hmm. So one to 3% Whoa. of the population. Okay. okay. They've kind of won the genetic lottery here, yeah. right? Because a lot and of people are watching this right now and being like, that's me, but it's probably not them. So what you see in people right. who, who say they have this is they're like, oh, I'm just drinking coffee. I'm going to sleep hack my way. But they eventually crash. Right. Yeah. With these people, they're just in a high of adrenaline and cortisol. They're not natural short sleepers. So if they're crashing in the middle of the day, they don't have this kind of genetic gift. Do we, or do you know of any other genes, genes that affect our sleep? There are two other ones which are really interesting. So the first is called SIK3. Mm -hmm. We can think of it kind of like the night shift janitor of the brain. Mm -hmm. It's clearing out all of our neurotoxins. Oh, yeah. And the other one is ADRB1, which I mentioned actually helps you push through to your REM cycle, mm -hmm. which is rapid eye movement sleep, and go into that dreaming period. So when you look at DC2, SIK3, ADRB1, that's your sleep fingerprint mm -hmm. and helps determine whether you are the kind of person that needs a nap or can power through on three hours. Wow. Yeah. So cool. Fascinating, right? Yeah, the yeah. DC, DEC2, and the ADRB1, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and the ACDC, and the RB. <laughs> All right. So tell us, what does a good night's sleep do for our brain? 
So aside from the genetics, we do see an increase and a decrease in certain neurochemicals. The ones you hear most about are melatonin and GABA. Mm -hmm. Those really reduce when you're sleeping, and so you'll see that your muscles are relaxed, you kind of have this sedation effect. There is another really cool uh, chemical called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a trigger for your brain to start sleeping. And so the minute it starts being produced, mm -hmm. or start dreaming, actually, yeah. so when you're dreaming, acetylcholine is spiking. We do also see a decrease in norepinephrine, histamine, and serotonin. So you can think about it as your genetic component and this neurochemical fluctuation up and down. That is what is determining what kind of sleeper you are. Fascinating. Okay, so if, we, if we're not one of these fancy people like yourself um, and we don't get enough, like a very good night's sleep, is there anything we can do? So I do have some good hacks for you. I encourage people to be a little cautious with hacks because it's gonna catch up with you. Mm. The first one is called micro napping. So if you take a nap, you can do it for 20 to 30 minutes. Don't go over 30 minutes. You're going to trick your brain into increasing cognitive performance. <laughs> just for a very short period of time. The other thing which works really well in the studio is if you are exposed to bright lights. So shock your brain awake with bright lights and you will have this kind of intermediate wakefulness. The one that I do when I sometimes get only two to three hours of sleep when I'm traveling like this week is you heavy load the first part of your day for those big complex decisions. Yeah. The latter part of your day is all about the I easy love that one. I love that decisions. One. Yeah. And the last one, we all hear this, drink water. Well, your brain, it has this fluid around it. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't drink enough water, it needs to be kind of fed like a plant. Okay. So if you haven't slept enough, stay hydrated. And we don't need that $95 no. bottle of You water do water not. Water, right? yeah, yeah. Just plain old no. from the tap water. Toronto Just tap checking. water, that's, that's okay. good. Just check in. <laughs> all right. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing all of this thank information you. and being on thank our you. show. So fascinating.